Hello book lovers and welcome back to our channel. Today I will be doing another book versus movie review comparison and I will be comparing the book Sapphire Blue by Kirsten Gear with the movie Sophia Blau. This video is actually part two of a series. I did the part one to the first book and the first movie um, a couple of months back and it will be linked down below. And just to let you all know, there will obviously be spoilers in this video for both the book, this book, this movie, the first book and the first movie, and actually as well the second, I mean the third movie and the third book. So how this video is going to work, I will be starting with the book and going through that basically and then I'll be going through the movie and then at the end I'll be doing a bit of a comparison if you already know the book and the movie and you just want to skip to the comparison and my thoughts really um, make sure to check out this time that will be here I think before we get started make sure to check out the first video where I do a bit more explaining about all the characters because in this version I'll just kind of be running through the storyline and not really explaining the characters unless there is something important happening of course so let's get started so the book begins with Lucy and Paul and they have traveled back in time to visit or to watch a performance that Shakespeare has done and then as they are back in time they see the Count of Saint Germain killing one of his ancestors Lancelot that was like the prologue and then the story actually starts with right at the end of the last book with Gwen and Gideon who are still kissing in the church and then once they are done kissing this ghost thing Zemirius appears and when they have left the church then Gideon gets a call from his mother about his brother and then he has to go figure something out and then Gwen has to go time travel again a little bit and then um but she and Zemirius talk a bit and then she talks with all the guardians and the little boy Robert and Falk as well. And then she has to go travel back to Elapse a, little, a bit and this is where we first meet the character Mr. Marley who is who we find out is a is a ancestor of the guy from the first book Rakox Rakowski, who is one of the like minion people from who of the count. Then when she is back in and she is elapsing she meets her grandfather Lucas and he has like a letter telling him that he has to be there to meet her and yeah so they talk a bit and they try and figure out a time when they can meet again. Gwen is at home in the morning and then when she goes to school afterwards she finds out that Charlotte has to help Gwen with her studies to go to the ball and stuff and then Gwen talks to Levesley and then Levesley gives her a knife to defend herself because she can't actually take anything back in time with her but like a little knife is easy for Gwen to hide. Then um, at school Mr. Marley then picks up Charlotte and Gwen and then she goes to have dance lessons with Mr. Gio Gio Giordano. When Gwen is not doing so well in the dancing Charlotte takes over and she dances with Gideon and Gwen gets a bit jealous. Then after that Gwen and Gideon elapse together where they end up dancing together and kissing and then once but once they've traveled back forward Gideon has to go pick up Raphael and then um, Gwen gets driven home by her mother. So when she was in the past and talking to Lucy in the last book he she mentioned the Green Rider and then but and to ask her grandfather about it but because her grandfather is dead she then asks this the like the butler of the house, Mr. Bernard, if he knows anything about the Green Rider. The next day at school, Gwen gets invited by a girl in her class, Cynthia, to a party. And Gwen also talks to James about trying to practice for like the ball and stuff together because James is from the time where Gwen has to travel back to. This is also where Raphael first gets really introduced as a character and him and Leslie like kind of like hit it off and they're like really good friends. After that, Gwen has her dance lessons again and then she finds out that Gideon went on a mission and he got injured and Gideon is kind of cold towards her and doesn't really want to talk to Gwen. 
Then Gwen goes back into the past and meets Lucas in the past, so her grandfather Lucas in the past again. Lucas gives Gwen a couple of inf a bit of information about Lucy and Paul and Lancelot and what happened. But they do this not in the cellar where uh, Gwen usually has to elapse, but in a cafe where people are smoking cigars and she ends up like smelling like cigars as well when she travels back in to the future. And Gideon kind of recognises this and gives her the cold shoulder. Um, but at this time, back at the house, Mr. Bernard finds the Green Rider, uh, and it turns out it is a book with a secret code in it. Um, after this, Gwen and Gideon go to a lapse together, and Gideon kind of interrogates her and that, and asks her why she hit him over the head, because um, what actually happened was that Gideon got injured in the past, and he just remembers seeing Gwen there and hitting him over the head. And Gwen is mad at Gideon because she would, she just thinks that she would never do something like that. So the whole time, Gwen and Gideon have been preparing to go to a soiree, uh, which is just a like a ball type thing, which is like the main point or one of the very important things in this book. And basically, at the soiree, Gwen kind of gets drunk, and the count tells her that they're going to have a fun time talking tomorrow and um, Gwen gets jealous of this other woman who is talking to Gideon at the ball and Gideon plays the violin and Gwen is like really emotional about that because she's a bit drunk and she also ends up singing memory from the song memory from cats and then Lord Alistair who was like the bad guy kind of he comes and with like this demon ghost figure thing f like following him and because Gwen can see ghosts she kind of like is like what are you doing but she she doesn't realize that it's a ghost but then she does realize afterwards and then yeah and then they go back home and then Aunt Maddie has a another vision she has a lot of visions that's her thing and then but then at the same time Raphael and Leslie have figured out the code in the Green Rider and they realise that it is actually a coordinate system. Um, after this Gwen goes to see the Count again and then the Count tells her that Gideon is not actually in love with Gwen and he has only been using her to try and get, to try and manipulate her and get her to do the things that he wants. It's like following up and then she is like really upset at this and this was of course in the past and then Gideon comes back because he was there as well but he had to go run an errand and he has like a big cut on his arm but Gwen doesn't really care and she just kind of breaks up with him. Now that's basically the end of the book but there is of course an epilogue and this kind of is this the this it's kind of that last scene but from Gideon's perspective because he goes out to do an errand for the count but he runs into Paul who has been like selling secrets the 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 guard like the the lodger's secrets to this other group called the Alliance and the the Florentine Alliance and um so and f he's doing this so that he can get papers um secret papers from them about like Gwen and Gideon and the Count and everything um, but he gets attacked by the Alliance and then Gideon saves him but he also gets cut but then Paul gives Gideon the papers instead of keeping them for himself because he thinks it's more important for, uh, for Gideon to have them. So that was basically the second book and now what now I'm going to go through the movie but this is going to be a bit shorter because most of the things are actually very similar, which I'll be talking about again later a little bit. But yes, yeah, so I'll just be running through it again. So again, it kind of starts with Lucy and Paul seeing a piece by Shakespeare, and then the Count uh, kills Lancelot, who is like the guy. Uh, so that's like the same thing again. But then this film starts differently to the other one because the last film ended differently to the book which meant that they couldn't start like right in the middle again so this um, movie starts with Gwen doing some research at the lodge and then she has to go and travel back to 1912 to talk to Lucy again and then she has she gets Mr. George's help 
for her and Gideon to travel back to 1912 and she talks to Lucy and Lucy tells her about the Green Rider and then they go to a church and kiss and travel back in time back to the future and that's where she meets Zemirius. Zemirius, I keep on pronouncing that wrong, Zemirius. That's where she meets Zemirius basically. Then once, like in the book, after this, she has to go elapse again and she meets her grandfather, Lucas. Um, but at the same time, this is like the thing with the movie as well, it doesn't just show it from Gwen's perspective, it shows it from Gideon's perspective as well. And in this, or just from a third person neutral perspective. And whilst Gwen is in the past meeting Lucas, a new um, leader of the Lodge comes. Because the leader of the Lodge was... Um, Falk de Villiers, but in the first book and movie, but in this movie, this guy called William comes, William de Villiers, the William de Villiers comes, and he has to, like, run the lodge, basically, because Falk didn't do a good enough job or something. I don't really know why but he's there, but he's there, basically. And then William decides to send Raphael to London to, like, control, um... Gideon and like monitor him kind of. After this Gwen comes back and then Gideon goes to Gwen's house and like helps like brings her home basically. And here Aunt Maddie has her vision then Gwen talks to Leslie. Leslie doesn't give her a weapon or anything. Gideon then goes back to meet the Count and this is again the third person neutral perspective and the Count tells Gideon to fall that he should manipulate Gwen by falling in love with her or something like something like that basically then after this once they are this um Gwen is at school and she has to go to the lodge and Gideon comes and picks her up with a motorbike and it's kind of really romantic and then she has she learns to dance with Mr. Whitman so there's no Mr. Gio, G, Giordano in this version it's just Charlotte and Mr. Whitman who are already past characters and then Gideon decides that he wants to dance with Charlotte to show Gwen how to dance, basically. Then again, Gwen is upset at this and goes to the past to elapse. And Gideon decides to join her and they do their dance in the past as well. But in this version, they end up sleeping together, which is a bit odd. Uh, when they've traveled back to the future, Raphael just kind of shows up and then Gwen has to go home again. This is also where Mr. Bernard then finds the Green Rider and um, Gideon, and this again third person perspective, Gideon's on his mission to the past and sees Gwen with the guy Paul in the past and then he gets knocked over the head. Um, in this version, uh, Madame Rossini, she tells Gwen about some information about Lucy and Paul and then Mr. George decides or uh, lets Gwen see her grandfather Lucas again in the past and here Lucas tells Gwen about Lancelot and a bit about Lucy and Paul as well and it's like the it's basically the same scene as in the book um, uh, but when she comes back Gideon gives Gwen the cold shoulder because of what happened in the past and at this same time though Raphael and Leslie figure out the coordinates or like figure out the secret of the Green Rider and figure out that it's actually just coordinates Gwen and Gideon go back to the past again and there's the interrogation scene and in this version Gwen and Gideon kind of break up and then the secret thing about the um, the coordinates is in this version it already kind of explains that is that it's a place in the in the house and that it's behind a the it says follow the water lilies basically and Zemirius shows Gwen this tapestry which has like water lilies on it and behind it she finds a chest she Gwen after, after this Gwen also goes to the soiree and basically a very, a very similar similar thing happens Gideon plays the violin and Gwen gets really drunk and then Gwen decides to sing the time warp with Gideon but then the alliance come, the Florentine alliance, and they like stop the party and then Gwen burns everything down because she had hairspray in her, hairspray and a lighter in her, um, recu reculte, I think that was what it's called, I'm not too sure about that. Um, the next day Gwen kind of has a hangover and she is like at home alone. Um, and then Gwen gets the chest out from behind the water lilies. And she finds the the chronograph in this chest.
and um, the first thing she does is go back to 1912 and to talk to Luke, Paul and Lucy and she basically finds out that she is actually their ch daughter and not her, like her mother's daughter which is uh, a, a thing that happens <laughs> and um, then but this is also the same time where Gideon got hit over the head in the past the other time before yeah, so that kind of explains that. At the same time, kind of, in that other third person thing, William finds the midwife who felt false the documents about Gwen's birth and he gets, like, information out of her. No one really knows what Gwen is right now because she's just kind of stuck in the past after she just found out that she is not her mum's daughter and Gideon's a bit worried for her so she finds Leslie with Raphael and, she, and like, they tell him that... Uh, Gwen has another chronograph to travel back into the past. When Gravel Gwen travels back to the future then, she is, Gideon finds her in like a locked up bar and they like kind of have like this really sweet moment. After this Gwen and Gideon, Gideon go visit the Count and then before they talk to the Count, Gideon tells Gwen that he loves her but then the Count tells Gwen that Gideon is only using her and doesn't actually love her and um at the same time, in this third person perspective, Mr. Bernard hides the chronograph at the house for Gwen so that no one can find it. And he also gives her a photo of her and Gideon dancing that will somehow happen in the future, but actually in the past, in the 20s, because roaring 20s and stuff. And then in the epilogue, it's basically the same thing as in the book where they go where it's Gideon's perspective again and he's getting the papers from the Florentine Alliance. Okay, so now it's time to look at some of the biggest changes. So one of the things that I've discussed in my past video is how I didn't like how they mumbled up or jumbled up the story of the of the book in the movie which meant that they couldn't start the first, the second movie off where the first movie ended. But I actually thought that they did a good job of trying to fix that in this movie, at the beginning at least. And I really liked how basically the first bit was like, basically pretty much the same as the book, which was like, pretty good. I, I like, I really liked that. So now some of the biggest changes for me were that they brought in this new character, William de Villiers. De Villiers. I don't know if it's just because they couldn't, f the actor who played Falk couldn't be there anymore or because they needed a new character or something but I just like that the ensemble cast for the book was um, basically the same except that they always brought in more characters instead of like taking characters out. I guess, spoiler for the, the next book and movie, um, how Mr. Marley plays a big role in the book. I liked how in this book they all, they like, he's a very important side character at least and he's always kind of around Gwen and um, also with Mr. Whitman as well which will make more sense when we look at the next book. But like I like how Mr. Whitman and Mr. Marley are always very close together because they kind of have like meaning and I think Mr. M uh, Mr. Marley is also in the movie, but he's just not an important character, or at least they don't really, like, introduce him. Yeah, so the next thing is, I guess they had to show, like, that the romance between Gwen and Gideon, but I didn't like how they were that intimate, because they are high schoolers, and this would not be a message that we are expressing to young children, that they have to, like, sleep with people in high school. And I get that that's, like, what people do, and I'm not, like, shaming them or anything, but, like... I guess it makes like sense because that's like the culture of like our world now and stuff but like couldn't they have just stuck with them like romantically dancing and being romantic and stuff because that was really cute in the, in the book and they were listening to like Hallelujah by Bon Jovi and I was like saying like Hallelujah and they were like kissing and all but like it was just kind of I just felt awkward for them when they traveled back to the future and they were all naked and stuff and I was like hmm yeah, I guess my biggest problem with this one was that Gwen already has found out all the secrets. Basically, the biggest secrets are that Lucy and Paul hid a chronograph for her in the house. And they kind of started solving that in this book, in, in the second book, but in the movie they've already finished solving it. And then the next biggest thing, and like probably the biggest thing in the whole book and movie, 
is that Lucy and Paul are Gwen's parents. Like, that's just such a big plot point and I don't like that they just kind of dish that out in this movie already because it is such a big point for the next movie because like at first it's like why are Lucy and Paul trying to protect me but like in this movie when Gideon gets because that's like the whole big thing with like the papers and all in the book in the next book it's like Gideon is like why are they trying to protect her um are they trying to do something bad with her or are they like using her or something or like but like he already knows now in the movie when he gets the papers oh yeah they're just trying to protect her because they're her parents and all yeah so that just kind of annoyed me because this just meant that in the next movie they didn't have any big secrets really to like get out and yeah and that just kind of ruined the last movie for me and I guess I, I still liked it as its own standalone movie, but just comparing it to the book, I just thought it wasn't as realistic. Like, but I'll talk about that when we get to the next one. Um, uh, some small changes that I thought were just a bit why was that Gwen sings the time warp. Like, we didn't need that. I thought that, like, that was just a bit stupid. Um, but... I guess that's because they couldn't get like the rights to memory, I guess, but like the time warp, really. And I guess it's funny because they're time traveling and all and like the time warp, ha ha ha, but like they didn't really need to put that in there. And then that there's already a big fight scene here, like in the in the book, the fight, there is no fight scene with the Alliance until like the very end. It's just kind of like a sinister shadow thing and like they didn't really have that in the movie at all, as far as I can tell. It was just this Alistair guy. But I guess that's what made him so much scary in the book, because he had this dark shadow behind him that, like, was scary and all. But, like, the movie was just like, oh, he's a guy. I guess I liked that this movie was so similar to the book, but I also think that they just took too much out of the next book already, that it really left them no choice that then to like change so much in the next movie so there wasn't even close to the book but overall I think that this movie compared to the book is actually pretty accurate and the filmmakers really did try to fix a lot of the things but they also just like kind of ruined it for themselves as well because there was no chance of going back after they revealed all the secrets secrets from the third book to this movie already a second movie but yes I would love to know what you think did you like the book or the movie better I personally prefer the book but that's just because I think I don't know I, I, I like the book I like the movie I just like the book a bit more because it just feels more in touch but yeah overall it's pretty cool who's your favorite character I'd also love to know that mine is who is my favorite character I like Raphael. Raphael's pretty cool. I just think he's cool in the book and in the movie. That's something that they did quite well. And yeah, so that's all from me today. Make sure you leave a like and a subscribe and ring the bell. And then make sure to comment down below who your favourite character is and if you preferred the book or the movie. And I will see you guys again soon. Bye!